Hey, welcome back to Jamie and Julia, everybody. Let's bake a cake. Oh! <laughs> bon appetit. I'm in volume two today, mastering the art of French cooking into the dessert chapter. The back of the book. Here it is, walnut cake. Gâteau au noix, le Saint André. So the Saint André is a delicious walnut filled creation that can be either a dessert or a cake. Or a cake. Dessert is cake. Cake is des what? Anyway, this cake intrigues me and the thing about this cake is that I'm the only one in this household that's not allergic to walnuts. So it's all mine. Let's get started. I'm very curious to see how this recipe turns out today because the ingredients in here, they're pretty typical, but the, like, the amounts that I'm using for each thing are interesting. Like this is how much flour I'm using to make a cake today. And I just spilled some on the book. So she says, go grab a blender. And I'm using my food processor today. Although, can you use them interchangeably, a blender and a food processor? One's more for solid foods, one's for liquids. Actually, I'm just throwing the question out there. I don't know if you can use them interchangeably. So I have four ounces, 113 grams of walnuts. And I'm gonna throw half of them into my food processor. In with half the walnuts, I'm gonna add half the sugar I'm using, which is a tablespoon and a half for now. Grind the nuts up with sugar but she doesn't say for like how long. So I'm guessing it's gonna be really fine, almost like a flour. That's what my guess is. I'm going for it. Something like that, I'm thinking. Yes, my voice sounds sick. It's just because I'm recovering from friggin' COVID. So yeah, if you're wondering what the hell's going on with the voice, that's what, it just hasn't recovered yet. I've recovered, but the voice hasn't yet. Okay, I'm gonna add in the remaining walnuts with the remaining sugar, which is another tablespoon and a half. Grind this up as well. I don't really know what the point of splitting it in half was, so I'm just gonna do it all together now. I need some wax paper, and then this goes on top. One and a half ounces, 43 grams of flour. That's all I have for this cake. And I'm supposed to sieve it over the nuts. With a rubber spatula, mix it well. I'm not sure why I'm doing this on wax paper and not just like a bowl, but I guess we'll find out. Let's put this aside. Two ounces, 57 grams of softened butter. Oh, I need a bowl. Whoops. Butter goes in. So I need to soften the butter in a bowl and beat to a creamy mayonnaise-like consistency. Easy now, easy now. It's like a mayo consistency. So this next part's got me excited. This is the cake batter. So I got eggs, sugar. But this next ingredient, this is exciting. Kirsch which is a, like a clear brandy, which has been distilled in cherries. And it's from, well, it originated from the Black Forest region in Germany. So any cake fans out there, does that ring any bells? Anyway, this isn't exactly Kirsch, this is Edel Kirsch. It's a liqueur featuring Kirsch, and then with like the addition of more sugar and a, with like a cherry juice in there as well. I bought this by accident because I thought I was buying just Kirsch, but I ended up buying something that sounds even more exciting to me. I mean, it's an expensive ingredient, but I didn't have to like buy a whole lot of other stuff for this cake today. So I figure I go all out with this. I have no regrets. Chance. That's delicious. So an electric mixer for the next part. I've decided to use my Silver Fox. In the stand mixer, I'm gonna add in four ounces, 114 grams of sugar, three eggs, pinch of salt, and around two tablespoons of this Kirsch, Edel Kirsch. Whisk attachment goes on. What do I gotta do? Beat for a moment on low speed. Then I'm gonna increase the speed to high and I'm gonna mix this and then I'm gonna beat this for several minutes until it has become pale, fluffy, doubled in volume, and holds a soft peak. 
she says this should take around seven to eight minutes, but I'm guessing around five minutes since I'm using more, more power. It is not holding soft peaks. I honestly don't really expect it to because I'm using full eggs and not just egg whites. We'll keep on trucking. It wasn't gonna turn into soft peaks, so I thought, what if I added like some cream of tartar just a little, just to see if it would come together. So this is as close as I can get. It doubled in size, it's pale looking, but it is definitely not soft peaks. But I'm gonna proceed forward with what I have. This took like over 10 minutes. It's just not happening today. But I have confidence that everything's gonna turn out. I do. So I need to add around two spoonful dollops of this into the butter. Ah, oh, yeah. And mix with a rubber spatula. Sprinkle some of the ground nuts on top. No, I wasn't supposed to add it into the butter mix. I was supposed to add it, oh. My mistake. <laughs> this is the walnut mixture, wink, wink. I just used it a second ago. I need to sprinkle in one third into the egg mixture. Delicately fold that in. I'm gonna add in the rest. Delicately fold that in as well. Now I gotta add in the butter that resembles mayonnaise. And between you and I, we both know that I added some of the uh, walnut mix into this. It says rapidly fold this together. Classic cake tin here, I'm gonna butter it up. Throw a little bit of flour in the cake tin. Maybe they just didn't have parchment paper back in the 50s. So she's referring to it as wax paper. That's my guess. Okay, turn the cake batter into the tin. It should be around two thirds filled. So tilt the tin to run the batter up to the rim all around. That's interesting. This is a first. I don't know what the hell that's gonna do. And then set immediately in the middle level of a preheated oven for 30 minutes. See you in half, half an hour. So she says in about 20 minutes, which is where we're at now, the cake will have risen to the top of the tin. It never did that because I never achieved the soft peaks. And then she says in another 10 minutes, which would be in 10 minutes, <laughs> I will have sunk slightly and will show a very faint line of shrinkage at the point around the edge of the tin, which none of this is gonna really be relevant to me because I never achieved that first thing. The oven that I'm using is far more advanced than anything that she's using in this book. It's hotter. So uh, when she says bake a, bake, bake a cake for 30 minutes, I know let's just bake it for 25 minutes, but the cake is already smaller than what she's describing in this book. So maybe 20, bake it for 23 minutes, which would be in 43 seconds. You don't want this cake in the oven any longer than that. That is done, right? Yeah. I'll never understand why I had to put the batter around the cake tin like that, but um, let's just do what she says. After 10 minutes, I need this on a baking. <gasps> oh, that was coming out. There we go. And let that cool and I move on to other stuff. Okay, so we got some decisions to make, you and I. Um, what do you want to see on top of this cake? chopped walnuts, caramelized walnuts, grated or shaved chocolate, and chocolate sauce. I know that the easy thing to pick here is the chocolate, right? That's obvious. But I always go that route, so instead I'm gonna go with caramelized walnuts. Final answer. I need a saucepan going over here on high heat, and I'm gonna combine equal amounts of sugar and water. Continue swirling for a moment as the liquid boils and changes from cloudy to perfectly clear. Once it's turned golden brown, that beautiful caramel color, turn the heat off. Add in my walnuts. Let's move them all around, get them all completely covered in it, and then take them out, put them on a baking sheet. So these need to cool off and harden up completely before I start messing about with them. I don't know if this is completely necessary, but this is what she tells me to do. So a bowl full of ice and water. Get another bowl here. So lastly, I just gotta make Chantilly cream. Chantilly cream. I have some heavy cream sitting in the fridge from other recipes. I gotta use it before it 
it goes bad because I'll just never use it. So this is great. And Chantilly cream is essentially just whipped, whipped, whipped cream. Although for my Chantilly cream, I should add a little pinch or whatever that was of vanilla. I just gotta beat this until it's doubled in volume. I need to add in a few hoots of uh, icing sugar. She says through a sieve, but I can't be bothered right now. So that and that. My caramelized walnuts are ready to go. I was looking for something really nice I could put the cake on, but I still have not added that into my uh, kitchen collection yet. So for now, I just gotta use a plate. This thing is really on there. Huh. Just to get it off. Man, that's on there. It's not ideal, but that's what happened. I had this idea to decorate this cake. Check this out, I'm gonna put a bowl here. Not that bowl is too big for my idea. That would be better. Get some icing sugar into a sh and see? That's what I'm gonna do. Take the bowl off and take my caramelized uh, walnuts into the center. Julia says nothing of the kind of decorating it like this. I'm just kind of making it my own little thing at this point. Last piece. Right there. Order up. Completely forgot I made this. Mm. To me, the best part of this entire cake was that tart taste you get from the cherries. Oh, what, cherries? Yeah, from the Kirsch. The Kirsch. And I had Kirsch liqueur, so it was like Kirsch on steroids because it had uh, extra cherry juice, extra sugar, and Kirsch. So if you're gonna make this cake, I recommend getting the Edel Kirsch. How many times can you say Kirsch? Kirsch. And uh, well, you gotta like walnuts to like this cake. So if you don't like walnuts or you're allergic to walnuts, then uh, you're out of luck. But for me, I thought this was a great cake. It's a great cake. In the center, collapsed in on itself because of the weight of the walnuts. <laughs> It's because I took the cake out about a minute or two too early, so it was a bit too soft in the center. It was delicious for eating, but it could not withstand the weight of the walnuts. These candied walnuts here, the chantilly cream, you don't necessarily need to do all that because the cake was excellent on its own. In fact, this took away from the cake in some cases. It's more just for show. Yeah, another fantastic dessert from JC. If that cake looks appealing to you, give it a whirl. I'm done talking about it. This was Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Over. This week and next week, I'm doing Patreon live streams. If you want to talk to me directly, if you have a question to ask, you just want to chit chat, sign up for my Patreon right here in the description as well.